this is it then. This is the car tasked with making or breaking Aston Martin. It is the new DBX. Couldn't be newer. New platform, new car, new market segment, built in a new factory. Arriving just at the time as Aston Martin gets a new chief executive in the form of Tobias Merz, who has arrived from AMG, which also supplies the DBX's V8 engine. And we're going to try it three different places today. I'm going to drive it off-road, which is where I am now. You are learning as I am. I've, I've got into this car a few a couple of minutes ago. And then I'm going to try it on the circuit, and then we're going to drive it on the road, which is where, obviously, the DVX will spend most of its time. But what's interesting is to try it in all three places, because this is a car like the Bentley Bentayga, like other luxury 4x4s that has to do more than one thing. It has to be a road car. It has to be... Is it leaps up? A steep slope like a spring gazelle it has to be a road car it has to be a sports car to an extent because it in Ast is it an aston martin Not a sports car but a sporting vehicle and because it's an suv it has to do that whole suv towing thing and ideally because it's a luxury car of 160,000 pounds it should do all of that while not troubling its owner at all not much to ask then from a company that doesn't have a great history of making billions of pounds in profit, let's face it. When Porsche makes a KN, it's got quite a lot of resources to fall back on. When Aston Martin sets on the DBX, well, it has its modest resources to do it with. But let's talk about the underneath. The structure is, although it is no longer the VH architecture, it is still a bonded aluminium structure with some cast components and stuff everywhere. It's not all just longitudinal extrusions like it like it like it was in the early days like it is in lotuses so you can kind of see it's the obvious tubes it's much more sculpted you would not know what the structure is when you're sitting inside this car now it feels plush there is leather everywhere i mean everywhere and it feels on first impression nicely put together I mean, it's impossible to tell until you get customer satisfaction surveys and things like that how well things are actually screwed together but it feels pretty good. I'll come to the infotainment and all that stuff in a minute when we're out on the road. But first, when we're off-road, let's talk about some of the underneath. So there's the AMG 550 horsepower, four litre turbocharged V8 at the front. That drives through to an active center differential where power generally goes to the rear. And there's a prop shaft, carbon fiber prop shaft from the active center differential through to uh, an E-diff at the back, a limited slip, electronically controlled differential at the back and then there's a fairly small differential at the front which can take up to 40% of power. In normal driving this car is pretty much rear wheel drive. As the system starts to detect slip it puts power forwards and you end up with a four wheel drive vehicle. I'm in terrain plus mode at the minute which is puts the air springing up by about 50 millimeters. You get a terrain which puts it up from standard by 25 and you get another 25. There's also an access mode which puts the air springing down. And finally, to make a roll as well controlled as possible, there's a 48 volt electrical architecture with electronic, electrically assisted anti-roll bars, which can stiffen very quickly. And I think they have something like 1400 newton meters of torque to try and resist roll. Not that they'll be trying to do that when I'm in terrain plus off-road mode, because it wants to roll, it wants the wheels to move around and it's going across this off-road course pretty deftly actually pretty well it's the sort of thing that would trouble most crossovers but all off-roaders would get through it easily enough because the most difficult thing that this car would most likely be asked to do in the uk is to pull a horse trailer across a wet grassy field it's actually one of the most difficult things you talk to off-road engineers it's one of the most difficult things to get a car to do because it's so much about tires and traction and wet grass is unbelievably slippery. You stick a slight incline into it and it's a disaster. So that will be the acid test for owners. But I think you can pretty comfortably say this car has all the off-road ability that is going to be asked of it by most owners. So that's off-road. Let's go and try it on the track and then we'll try it on the road and then try and draw some kind of verdict. First, let's try the DBX on circuit. You may notice I'm in a different car. Same, same car, mechanically the same. The difference is off-road, I tried it on all-season tyres, and it is now on the summer, what some people call summer tyres, what I just refer to as tyres, which are Pirelli P0s. You can get 
the all seasons or you can get winters with it as well all on 22 inch rims so i've got it from gt mode which is its normal mode you can go down once into sport you can go down once again into sport plus that takes the ride height down by 15 mil each time it also increases the spring stiffness, it increases the damper, the adaptive damper stiffness. It also changes the roll rate, these uh, active anti-roll bars stiffen slightly, but what it also does is moves the roll centre backwards. Basically, I think it allows, it changes how much the front and rear roll respectively to give a more agile feel. And it does immediately. There's only so much you can tell about a car's dynamics off-road, but you get it on track, you find it a lot very quickly. This is a very agile feeling car. It does have a thing where as you turn, it sort of tucks around like that. So it feels more agile than a 2300 kilogram off-roader that can tow 2.7 tons, really ought to. And that's kind of as you would hope, I guess. It's not a lot of roll in here. You can just hear the stability control just start to try and keep things under control. Is it fast? Well, it's fast enough for a 23 ton of roader and also it feels really controlled, really well controlled. Oh, well, there it goes, look, that's slip. What 4x4s are more fun than this in conditions like this? I'm gonna say that in standard production cars, there are none. Lamborghini Urus, maybe, maybe. I've driven one on circuit, but I don't think it feels quite as agile and adjustable as this does. This is impressive. It steers confidently, the drive position is good, pedal weights are strong, braking is strong. This Stowe circuit, which is Aston's sort of development base, is quite demanding on cooling of brakes because there are a lot of stops. so much there's a lot of roll mitigation goes on in off-roaders in all off-roaders that's the thing it doesn't want you to do is tip over so the key is to try and make it as much fun as possible without chucking you onto its roof which is a laudable aim i think this 4x4 does that with more agility and more confidence and more control than probably probably any other serious off-roader I've tried. Maybe a Porsche KN Turbo or a Macan Turbo, which is smaller, has more control, possibly. But I don't think they feel quite as agile as this. This is, this is good. This is really good. The noise of the ESP might get on my nerves if I were to use it on track, but honestly, who uses a car like this on track? What you want to know is, is it agile? Is it composed? Is it controlled? Is it capable? The answer to all of those Yes, absolutely. So, enough of this messing around, fun though it is. Uh, let's go try it on the road, give it a proper road test, come up with a proper verdict for what so far has been an impressive new 4x4. Right then, so away from the track and away from off-road, in more relaxed conditions, in the kind of conditions that you would see the DBX all the time, because this is, let's face it, a road car more than anything. What is it like? Well, there's a lot of leather in here, isn't there? There is an awful lot of leather. I don't think you have to have quite so much and quite so in your face of colour, but there is a good driving position. It's now got the kind of quality that actually the DB11 probably should have come with in the first place. The vents certainly are, are marked improvement on the really plasticky ones that the coupes have recently come with and also the dials have got better colours and better graphics and it's a spacious interior. There are three seats in the back and you can fit three adults back there behind two adults on the front, no bother at all. In terms of infotainment, there's a Mercedes base system with an Aston frontage on it which is actually pretty sensible. Why would you bother trying to make one of your own if you're Aston, you might as well just use somebody else's. It's a good system but like most of them, it'll link to your smartphone. That's kind of what you'll do most of the time anyway, isn't it? In terms of feel and fit and finish, well, it's nice. It does feel handmade because, because it is. And there's some sort of broguing and stitching and stuff like that. Some of the bits of leather, some manufacturers would try and pull all of the little pleats and everything out, I think. Whereas this is kind of, you know, they've left a few. I don't know if it's pre-production or whether it's intentional to make it look handmade that there's a few sort of ruffles in it that look like your grandmother's neck you know it's a little bit 
leathery. But it's a nice cabin and it's also one, didn't expect this necessarily, that's really easy to get in and out of. The window line is quite high because this is an elegant, quite good looking car for an SUV, I think. When you open that door, there's a completely flat load sill and Aston's typically with their aluminium architecture have a load of strength down the sills, down each side. This is completely flat and also the car drops 50 mil. It doesn't have to, but you know, you can set it to drop 50 mil as an access mode. It's really easy to get in and out of. And you know how SUVs are made for people with trendy, active lifestyles. Well, actually, if, you've not ter if you're not terribly active at all, this car is great because it's a real doddle to get into. Just slide into it. Sit yourself down with an ooh and an ouch. So what's it like to drive? Well, in terms of ride comfort, it is good. I, don't, I wouldn't go any further than that. I wouldn't say absolutely outstanding, but I would say it is good. It is competitive. Because the thing about it is that Aston Martin is trying to do several different things. I mean, this is a nearly 2.3 tonne car. It's got to be quite comfortable, but it's also got to do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and 180 miles an hour flat out. Those are not easy things to combine. So it gets all of the kit thrown at it with the 48 volt electrics and the air suspension and the adaptive damping. It gets the whole caboodle thrown at it to try and make it cope. And it does that mostly pretty well. So I'm in GT mode, you can drop the suspension or raise the suspension or whatever, but for most road driving you'll mooch around in GT mode and the ride is good, it is comfortable, it is pliant. There is occasionally a little bit of sort of float and heave over crests and stuff, but I think it would be unreasonable to expect too much more of it than it delivers. And the blend is probably about right. This is as enjoyable as a 2.3 ton SUV gets really it doesn't you know they don't get much more engaging than this the steering is good responsive accurate you get sort of some semblance of feel back through it you know you feel like this is an enjoyable car is it does it feel like an Aston Martin to drive I'm not sure it totally does in the same way that a Porsche Taycan feels like a Porsche to drive but this car is doing something that no Aston has ever done before so there's a slight inevitability about that. For the most part, in terms of control weights and sort of the way it rides down the road, I think Aston's tried to put the Aston character into it. Largely, it has succeeded, but it is not like a conventional Aston Martin. Where I do think there's room for improvement is in the noise of the ride. And I think maybe that's inevitable again. I mean, this is an aluminium car and it has air springs at each corner. So it's got an echo chamber on each corner and also aluminium can be very stiff but quite often it is a noise generating kind of material it doesn't damp out noise in the way that steel does so this is quite a noisy riding car not all road noise but as you run especially around town as you run over small bumps and things like that you get sort of these little thumps and clonks and things like that and that takes away from some of the luxurious feel that this car otherwise tries to impart and if you're looking for things wrong with it look no car is no car is perfect. I think in its standard drive mode, the engine and gearbox response can sometimes just be a little bit sluggish as you come out of town and you want to start accelerating. It takes a moment to think about it before it kicks down. You can take control with the paddles, so that's less of a problem than it otherwise would be, but you know, sometimes you might not want that. And also, if you do want a bit of extra gearbox and throttle response, and this is not an Aston thing, this is just common to everything, you can turn that up in the individual settings panel so you get a bit more response. But then if you happen to be cruising, it quite often refuses to change up to the highest gear it can and leaves you sort of a few hundred or a couple of thousand revs lower than you'd otherwise like to be. So you then have to sort of think, well, I kind of want to be in individual mode or GT mode or the sports mode for this and that and the other, but there's never one that's absolutely quite spot on. I guess the short of it is that any SUV that isn't an outright utility 4x4 involves some compromise and Aston is asking this car to be an SUV that can be a tow car, that can go off-road, that can be luxurious and can be sporting. So some of those things are going to be compromised. You can't extreme focus on any such area. I think it's a solid effort. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's a really solid effort. Bear in mind it's a, it's a new platform, a new segment, a new factory from a manufacturer with modest resources. It's a really solid effort from that point of view. And also, what, I'm driving along now and think, well, what would I rather be in? 
of the competition. Would I rather be in a Bentley Bentayga? No, I'd rather be driving this. Would I rather be in a Porsche KN of this sort of speed? I think it probably wouldn't be as comfortable. It might be a bit more rewarding, but it wouldn't be as luxurious. So no, maybe I'd rather be in this. And I think in terms of all of those compromises that Aston has put together, it has come out with a very, very rewarding, thoroughly sorted, solid, first attempt at an SUV.